Welcome to Real Feels, the podcast that invites people to be public with their private persona. In a world where many of us constantly curate a version of ourselves on social media, I'd like to take some time to find out who we are, who we aim to be, and the space in between. I'm your host, Brad Gage. Today's show is about feeling the weight of the grind, how we use social media to promote our endeavors, and following passion until it aligns with a job. I invite you to look at how you engage with your online followers with actor, writer, and host, Lindsay Ames, who starts off talking about what people know and don't about her life based on social media. I'm sure you run into this a lot of times where people are like, oh, that thing, I see you're doing things. Oh, yeah. And they don't know what it is because they didn't take the time to, to engage with it. Right. Um, but they know you're doing something. Isn't that all that, that's the only thing that matters? Is that the only thing that I matters? I guess, I think, I mean... No. What matters? <laughs> That's a first question. I'll tell you, you what matters. What matters? Really, what matters? What matters to you? It. What matters to, to me you. That's right what, now? That's what matters. Right now, what matters to me is trying to stay as in the moment as possible, which sounds so trite. But I don't think so. You're in the right place if that's if that's your truth. Yeah, that's this like, is exactly. Oh yeah. Where you. Oh, today has been a real woo doozy. I mean, the whole year has, but for sure today what happened to has me? been, uh, I started out, I've been, I mean, it's been a real roller coaster of a year. But let's say it's been a real roller coaster of five years, but real, real uh, impactful, strong, you know, I started to believe the mercury and retrograde thing. That's yeah. how like crazy things were getting. And uh, I've been working very hard always on myself and always to try and actualize uh, a state of well-being and amongst other things and uh, and work very hard to like be happy and grateful and not give in to like negative uh, cycles and I just feel like today I started off on a real high I was doing really well and I went out for a lunch uh, with a couple of people I truly adore. And I understand why what happened at lunch happened and it, it had nothing to do with me, but what I was witnessing and what I was hearing made me internalize so much that I ended up leaving in a neurotic space. That brought you don't me need down. To get, so fun, you, right? No, this First is- First question, this is here important. we go. We're digging in here. Oh, no, yeah. this is what it's about. Okay, I, I, you, I don't, I'm not going to ask you to be way, way more specific, but yeah. can you say at least what it was that they that mm -hmm. the, the the topic that was being discussed that was being so absorbed? It wasn't. Into you, well, it was everything. Or the way it, that it's it was that being said. it's that one person. I, I I know that one person came, and I think because of the other person who was there, uh, I, I think it put them in a place where they were feeling insecure. Which when they feel insecure, it's like it ends up being a lot of talk about the industry and job yes. and work and that person has tons of crazy amazing things going on yeah and so does the other person and right now i'm in like a holding pattern of and it's been this way all year is like i'm in a holding pattern for all the things that i like grind at and it just felt like the conversation felt very much like here and here and i was watching it and not being involved not that i wanted to be involved in that i wanted to talk about anything else but then hearing it just made me be like Oh, I've just waiting for all this stuff, which means it's pretty much uh, not real. And like, what am I doing? And meanwhile, I'm like always doing um, like yeah. I've had some, you know, you I, are. Yeah. Yeah. I always have things. But, but this, you're saying so you're saying this, this conversation was making you self-conscious. Yeah. It made me internalize, yes. which it's like, you know, because people are mirrors for each other's yes. experience and none of it had anything to do with me. So I guess on a very narcissistic <laughs> level, I just ended up turning it in and just feeling just not great about anything. What and you, I went yeah. really excited about the lunch. I had such a great night last night with one of the same people that I brought to the lunch. That's why I was like, Oh, I'm so, you know, we had such a great night last night. Let's go like, I'll meet, meet you for lunch. So it was just, and nobody was bad person or anything I I know and I understand 
I know why that happened. Yeah. And I know it was just them in a defense mechanism and going to where they were comfortable and needed where they felt like they needed to like show stuff. When that happens, when you feel that way, mm -hmm. what do you do? How do you, how do you Truly, uh, uh, wrestle like, with it? I just, how do you get, I don't know, get past, get through. Like those in the moments. moment when I was at, at the, no, no, no. Cause in the after. moment you're, I'm sure I, I'm guessing it was just happening and you're mm -hmm. like, well, I want this to be over soon. Yeah. And I just, but afterwards you're listened. left with that feeling. Yeah. Uh, what do you do with that feeling when you feel So it? I wish I was doing something healthy. Sometimes I do. Yeah. Like what? Uh, uh, Sometimes what were the healthy things that I do? Yeah. I guess it's kind of healthy always that I do try. It's just whether I can get out of it or not. I mean, I always will try to recognize the thoughts. And that's like always the first thing. If yes. you're ever, if anybody is ever in any sort of state of activation that's on like a negative or anxious level, if you can acknowledge your thoughts, that's like the first step in being able to turn it around by any means. Right. Otherwise, not you're, being your thoughts, but seeing your thoughts, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Once you start to get into the practice of doing that, then you can get into the practice of then altering the thoughts and getting out of them. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about how you use social media. I mean, there's a lot of facets mm -hmm. of it. I think you use it in a way that, that actually gets through. Because do you, you do, so? because you do, you you post a lot, but no, I don't think anybody looks at it and that goes, oh, she posts too much about it. I think people go, oh, uh, she really is passionate about her thing. I don't know. How do you it's, feel about I that? I mean, I definitely feel like I'm so excited about the show and I love the show. And I think the show is so amazing. And I see how Very people special. react when they do it. Mm -hmm. I see how people, the audience reacts. And, um, do you want to talk a little bit about what it's about? So, yeah. So know. the show is called My Diary and I get comedians and actors and musicians and anybody that's in the public eye. Uh, to come and read from their diary. And a diary is anything from your past that's been written or recorded. So it doesn't just have to be a journal entry. It can be uh, poetry. It can mm -hmm. be letters. It can be um, old PowerPoint presentations. It doesn't matter. Anything that the performer feels like it's something from their past that means something to them and they want to share on a bigger right. scale. It's a very, very funny show, uh, but it's also extremely vulnerable. And I've been so lucky to be able to be a part of that for people because there have been some truly raw, real, vulnerable, uh, really like soul stirring yeah. things that have been shared. Breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. Absolutely. Break Complete, people, yeah. and people reconnecting with themselves. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so it's funny because for me, the bane of my existence has been the social media and the promoting because it's a show that has sold out a lot and it gets a uh, really great attendance. But, you know, people always say to me, they say they see me post about it tons and they uh, can't believe the lineups that I get. And I work very hard on that. It's quite a brutal um, process to get people out to the theater. And it yeah. feels like when I'm posting um, about the show, like it's like cringeworthy a lot of the time for me, uh, even though I'm so proud of the show and I yeah. feel like it sucks because I know I, I, and I've had the conversation with so many people because when I leave the show and people are like freaking out about it and they're like, it should be just like sold out, packed to the rafters every time. And I agree. And I feel like in the, uh, population of Los Angeles. If you like human beings and comedians and like, uh, I mean, it, it fits so many facets yeah. of so many, it checks so many boxes for so many people um, that it's always kind of a conundrum. And I really have had to work on myself and check myself over the years because I've become so invested and involved. And when I know the numbers aren't great, it, it drives me bananas. Yeah. It's not about having like the bodies there. It's that I truly want people to come and sit and see because it has helped so many people. Like mm -hmm. you're never going to leave that show, that theater feeling worse than when you came in and you will definitely feel better. So yeah, I definitely feel like mental health wise running a show is... <laughs> <laughs> dubious. Well, I was going to say, what what keeps you sane to a certain degree out here? Because uh, uh, it, it's... Yeah. 
I think you are a beloved person <laughs> in the communities that you are involved with, and I've known you a long time. Mm-hmm. So yes, I think you're sane. I think you're lovely and sane, yeah. and and, I just, and and know what you're doing. So so how how I mean everybody, you're, I'm sure sure it doesn't always feel like that. But yeah. how, what do you do? Do you, or do you do anything to center yourself when you are feeling like there are so many things that are out of your control? One of the things that I do, this is like, so I smoke a lot of weed. Sure. And I definitely find that I do, you know, I'll self-medicate, whatever that. But Calms like, your anxiety, you know, so. Yeah. But beyond that, I work like, so one thing that I was doing, I don't know when I stopped doing this just recently. This is probably why I haven't been feel. Well, I mean, I was feeling great. It just was this morning. One thing that I've been doing that I really loved and I found really changed me for a while. I love that period when you're in bed and your mind is going. I know some yeah. people, it drives them, but I do get a lot of great ideas and I keep my like pad of paper by my bed so I can write ideas. Yeah. But I started taking that time and using my thoughts to think about all the things that I really enjoyed that day and what the things that I was excited about. And then same thing in the morning spent like 15, 20 when you're starting to wake up and you can hear things and you're not really ready to get in a bed mm-hmm. and you know, yeah, you're just like, you're all comfy in yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. And then you do that and, uh, it really sets you on the right foot. Definitely not looking at your phone for as long as oh, possible yeah. because it is, I mean, we all know this, that you get that first dopamine. The first dopamine rush is going to happen when you look at your phone, no matter what. And then the rest of the day, your brain is just chasing that. Yeah. What is your relationship with social media? Does it bring you joy when you put the phone down? How do you feel when you put that phone down? Because we're always drawn to it. Mm -hmm. We think about it. There is the dopamine rush. There's the likes. There's all this stuff. But how do you feel most of the time when you put it down and how do you want to feel when you put it down? Interesting. When you put it down, I'm trying to think because it's like... We don't think a lot about the after. Like you mean like, yeah. So it's like when you're if done I, if looking I post, at Instagram, yeah, yeah. How, do you, how do you want, how would you wish you felt and do you fe- feel like that happens? I'm really good. One thing that I really am happy about in my, the way my brain works is that like I don't follow people or really like speak buy and look on people like exes or mm. you know people that you're like or love to hate or, or yeah, yeah or like yeah, anything yeah. you know I don't it's interesting when people spend time like looking yes at exes and like who liked what building the, narratives yes, in their mind I yes. mean I've done it I, I don't I'm I don't sure lo- every, so many people yes. does it and that's what I'm saying and I'm, I'm it's so unhealthy I'm very grateful yeah. that of the things and the places, the unhealthy places that my brain takes me, that is one place that it just will not, I don't ever want to like cross that line. Do you enjoy using like Instagram? Do you enjoy it? Or is it a compulsion in the way that you feel like you have to do it? Yeah, it's a compulsion for sure. When I first posted to Instagram for my personal stuff, I used to do a lot of photography just like self-trained not like I went to school but I loved photos and I liked taking photos and um I liked building pages and narratives like I used to love my Flickr account back in the day you know I just loved creating an aesthetic and now I was just talking to someone I found on my Instagram if I don't post a picture of myself your your face yeah yeah it gets like 20 likes and then if I post something of me then it's gonna go a hundred plus but it like and I found a couple weeks ago that I was starting to like look for pictures. Like there's a lot of fun pictures that I like to take with friends and there, and I like taking cool pictures and, but it started looking just like me, 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 <laughs> me. And it's just, uh, what did, how did that make you feel? I don't love, I don't love that. Yeah. I don't, I mean like I like posting a nice picture of myself yes. and it's nice to get the likes a hundred percent. You and yeah, you're like I like how this photo looks. But I me. like posting the chalk drawing that my uh-huh. nephew did of an alien with weird space tits, you yeah. know. And I think that that deserves. How old is you, he? He's he's nine now. <laughs> so the, nine, the they're thing. really that's when they get into space oh, tits. Let me tell you, nine. I think he was into space tits by seven. I definitely was. Yeah. 
Oh, and my niece way into space tits, probably even by like four. Like you know, no I think, gravity. I They're think just our family. Yes, the I think my family. I think uh, we come from a long line of libidos. You know, <laughs> I think there's like a high libido count. It's like it doesn't matter. It's just so funny to see. Oh, the, when I turned around and I just saw the and he, and he said and I didn't react because when kids like swear or do anything yeah. they want you to so he was like look Auntie Lindsay it's some space tits and like just hearing space tits out of a like tiny nine year old <laughs> voice was <laughs> wildly amazing. Do you feel like you have a uh, a goal with how you use Instagram or is it a tool for some sort of means to an end? It's a tool. Yeah, it's a tool. Yeah, I mean, it used to be for fun, but it's like, it's a tool. Like, you're for trying what? to do it. S- <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> because I mean, we think it's it helps us in our yeah, career. Yeah, But like... I mean, in a sense, it does also because it, it is does. keeping you up abreast. Like, I have had so... M- a lot of people that I would not expect, like people in the entertainment industry that I definitely like actors and producers and people that have been like, Oh yeah, I know about your show. I've heard you. And I think it's because I've promoted it so much. I think it's also because of the lineups and stuff, but I know it's because I'm like, I'm out there, I'm tagging. And so that does, I feel like to that end, you know, people you're, you're remaining in people's consciousness and that's, a part, you know, that's a big part of it. Come for the face, stay for the diaries. Is that what? Is oh, that what it is? New tag. You guys heard it. Do <laughs> you own come, that IP? Can I borrow that? <laughs> you, sure, you sure can. Come for the face. I don't think I've uh, come for the yeah, face. Yeah, is that come, a line come in? For the, uh, come for the face. Uh, stay, stay, yeah. <laughs> come for the face. <laughs> stay for the diaries. How do you feel like things are going as far as <laughs> social media's <laughs> um, power over? us and over younger generation do you feel like we are it's awful we are do do you feel like we are doomed do you feel like, we, like we're never that it's doomed too late? because i mean we're never doomed because life is just going to change and emerge around it like there will be really wonderful things that happen because of it and there will be very terrible things that continue to happen because of it just like anything else yeah. it's just we're life uh, you know, is a continual evolution. And so there's be no way for us to turn back from this. There's no, unless we turn into Gilead and, uh, all the women Uh have to, you know, uh, so you believe uh, there, there, do you believe it is progress towards something more positive? I guess not maybe doom, but it's, do you feel like there, that there is more good than bad caused by the proliferation of these websites? No, I think right now we're in a really dark place. And so, that's why I make sandwich videos. Yeah. So we don't have to That's think how about you make your peace of mind. our rights getting taken away, you know, and people just killing each other all the time. Yeah. And uh, you can't be angry all the time about this stuff. Yeah. You need to give yourself. It's, we it, all you were, do. Yeah. You were allowed to give ourselves peace. I think there's some people online who, who say if you are not fighting or some, doing something all the time that that's bad. But it's like, we how have can to you live do in that? Peace. Yeah. Like we never did that. We right. were not doing that. Thousands of years ago, hundreds of years, thirty years ago, thirty, yeah. You're just doing your thing. thing. Yeah, think about when you had all day to like just pick some potatoes in a field in England, you know, and go back to your little hut. Yeah, you're, you're out probably sleeping by seven p.m. You know, you died when you were like forty, but yeah, yeah, but is, still, is that better? I don't I know. Don't know. <laughs> it could be. It could be. It could be. Well, who are we who to knows? say? Or, we, we or been, maybe they were just very. Were they very bored? Uh, a, a I'm lacking. never bored. I am right. I am never fucking bored. And why aren't you ever bored? Because uh, there's always something to think about, or look at, or enjoy, or not enjoy. There's always something to mull over. What was the last thing that you looked at and enjoyed that you remember? You're like, oh man, I'm really liking whatever this thing is. Well, uh, it was on social media. There was a guy that found the, the. He's like a geologist, and he found these rocks that when you shine a flashlight on them, they look like they're on fire, molten lava. Wow. But they're, you know, then when the light is off, they just look like a regular stone. It was on if you were high. Oh, okay. Yeah. Were you high when you saw it? I mean, I'm almost always <laughs> high. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> yes, yes, I was. You but were. that wasn't what derived it. I mean, I'm very, I feel like I am sane enough. Like, it's not like, ooh, fucking rock. But it it was like, oh, that's good. <laughs> not that that's... <laughs> Much I think different cool. than the yeah the other. Do you think Mercury uh, in retrograde is uh, what did you say before? Hokey, 
I don't know. Real, I, I feel real? like, you know, we look to astrology and all this stuff when we're sad and depressed and angry. And I feel like whenever I'm happy and in a good place, I'm never thinking about what sure. planets are where, you know, I, the thing that I'm really trying to like work on and embrace is there is no good or bad. There just is. Yes. Um, Ooh, that's a good one. It, it really is. It It's completely true. It's completely true. It's very hard sometimes to wrap your head around. Um, also because it's like really the reality that I am processing and also the person that I am and that I think I am, nobody else sees the same me. I, I think also I just came home from seeing all my family. So I was in such a good place. Like whenever yeah. you leave LA and you go back to normal life, especially with people that love you and kids and all that, it's just like wonderful. I did stand up shows in Vancouver and like the audiences were incredible incredible yeah. and they were so happy to see comedy and my mom came to the show she's never seen me do stand up and it was an, an amazing show and I just feel like being around people who support you and are like oh I oh I see what you're doing oh this is like yeah rad you know it's just things like that that make you feel like okay okay yeah there's a lot of joy oh, okay. out there yeah and there's a lot of people who are and I'm not... bringing a lot of joy to people yes. but it's very hard here because you immediately you'll go out to lunch with other people and then their shit starts to become your shit yeah and and it's good that I'm aware of it because I know that I won't you know a couple years ago it could have been that I would have heard that and then had maybe like three or four days of being like, oh, my life, shit. But here I am, like, it's a few hours later. And, I'm, and even when I left, I was like, that's not your shit. It's making you feel weird and bad, but that's not your, it's not about you. It had nothing to do with you. You're on your grind. Keep going. Yeah. You know? But, yeah. No, that sounds but lovely, though. I mean, even just, it's funny. It's just normal. It's like, I love using the word normal because it isn't normal, normal. here. Yeah. And and I think uh, it's okay that it's not. Yeah. And I still accept it. And I love this city. I love my community. It's so much fun. But yeah. it is okay to say um, what we do is not all there is. And it's not the most important thing in the world. And once Absolutely. I realize that, we yeah. all act like it is, but it's not. And once I realize that, I calm down a lot more. Uh huh. Um, so that's that's cool. Yeah. 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 And Vancouver is lovely. I mean, Vancouver is so lovely. You get in, you know, it's just, there is a lot of you know, hikes and wildlife here. We're in California, yeah. obviously, but in Vancouver, it's so immediate and it's so fresh and the air is yeah. just that much better. You know, you see the mountains. My Canadian accent comes back mountains. 20 times <laughs> yeah, sure. harder. I say bag and flag. And, uh, no, you guys are doing it real well up there. I was just in Montreal. It was, uh, uh, just, is it, it's, it's a amazing. better, it's a better place. <laughs> it really, for, for, for the soul. It really for is. Joy. Yeah. Also uh, because the way you hear news, the way news is reported, mm -hmm. what you're hearing is uh, very different than here. And also because it isn't the country, you know, the, where everything is happening. So it just all of a sudden, like you come out and it, you are able to just kind of like rest a little bit easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when I say better for you out there, uh, uh, proud to be an American, right. but I'm happy but to be here. I'm, I love, yeah, we're all grateful, yeah. but also like better in the ways that I, uh, that are affecting me right now. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit better, yeah. but also easier said when I've, am there three times in my life. Yeah, exactly. Um, Lindsay Ames, how does your heart feel right now? Oh, Brad, thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like my heart feels just a little like chill. Chill. <laughs> it feels yeah. Chill is good. Yeah. I I I I think I just yeah, I think I was just thrown through a little bit of a loop today. So I feel I was this morning my heart was feeling real bright and real mm -hmm. like pew and it's also been so hot today. So maybe you know. <laughs> Maybe that maybe just, maybe now that the sun is down, you can finally chill. Yeah, maybe I can chill. Open up that sunroof. Oh, put a little baby, song on, yes. You know, go dry. And then when you're in bed, you can you can go into that little gratitude list. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Really, comfy I really and need nice. to. Yeah. But it is, you know, it's true. Like when the people talk about meditation, because I was good at that for a while, and like, there's a lot of things that I've worked on, and it is work. You know, it's like oh, you yeah. get. You get into it and then you get good and you feel, you reap the rewards of that work, but then you feel good. So then you're like, well, I don't, I don't have to meditate today. <laughs> Same thing like, but you know, then when you, you lose out, it. Yeah. Then you lose it. 
It's uh, uh, Same yeah, working it's, it's out. integration, oh. mm-hmm. and it's, it's really all integration. Hard. Yeah. yeah, we have to balance so much now. Not even just actors, like not us here, the world, everybody. There are so many things. Like if you have kids, you have to pick them up, take them to school, get them to their activities. If they have like a learning disability, get them their tutors, make sure that they're integrating with their friends properly, socializing snacks, oh, yeah. you know, like if family time going, it's snacks just, is at the top, but yeah, snacks, you snacks. cannot find, snacks. If you are a parent, I know this. If you are a parent, Ooh. snacks, uh, are about, they, they comprise about 60 to 70% of your existence. <laughs> Yeah, it's a snack reliant. You yeah. need to have snacks ready. You have run out of snacks. You need to buy more snacks. You need to prepare the snacks. You need to clean out the snacks that were in the bag. I just, I've been around a lot of kids lately. <laughs> snacks. Parents will get it. Right in. Let us know. I Do mean, you get it? <laughs> I get it. I love snacks. Who doesn't no love one, a snack? Yeah, who doesn't love? Those are our great United. Yes. Snacks, snacks and Sammies. Yeah, if we go down, like if things really hit a fever pitch in any way, like a nuclear outbreak again, it's like if we can just get the right snacks uh, to the right people, then... Maybe they'll calm down. Yeah. Cooler heads. Maybe they will hit that button. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. This is so lovely. Yeah. And, uh, uh, well, a little free therapy, guys. Great. For me. <laughs> Not for any of you guys. It was free therapy for me. All right. Well, yeah. great. We got to go. Great, we can't talk about Great that. feeling things with you. Yeah. You too. You're wonderful. You're wonderful.